Hello, uh, my name is Jiří. This is how I look without the face mask on, so uh, maybe focus on the picture for a while. Uh, also, if you don't speak Czech, good luck pronouncing my name. And today I'm going to talk about dependency injection. Uh, and let me start uh, by looking at some code. Let's dive right into it. This is a very simple authentication controller which uh, receives some credentials via post, presumably, uh, verifies them, and depending on if they are valid or not, if they are uh, correct, it renders an error page or signs the user in and redire redirects them to the home page. You might feel that something doesn't belong here in this controller, and it's actually this, the authentication logic. It's not the responsibility of the controller. It should delegate this decision whether the credentials are correct to someone else, if only for the logic to be reusable. Let's say in some kind of middleware if you're writing an API layer for the application. So let's do just that. Let's extract the logic to a separate class called authenticator and let's use that class. Let's delegate to that class in the controller. Now the controller suddenly has a dependency on the authenticator and needs to fetch it from somewhere, needs to get the dependency. How can we get the dependency into the controller? Well, the most obvious solution would be to create it at the spot. Like, fair enough, it seems to work in this case. What if the authenticator implementation wasn't that simple and it relied on some kind of database connection through a user repository class that in turn needs a database connection object to actually talk to the database. And to build the database connection, we need some credentials, we need some configuration parameters. Where do we even get them? Some environment variables maybe? I don't know, but then imagine you are writing that authentication middleware somewhere else in the application and you need the same authenticator. You need to duplicate, copy-paste this whole line of code. Now, that's, I'm sure we can agree that this is not a good approach. It's better to delegate the creation of the authenticator, of the dependency, to someone else. And that someone else is the dependency injection container. DI containers are supreme architects. They know how to create any service needed within the application. And containers are responsible for creating the services. Now, dependency injection and dependency injection containers have gained adoption, um, and have been gaining adoption for a long time. Many major, minor, whatever, all frameworks, web frameworks and PHP ship with their own dependency injection solution. There are even standalone packages dedicated to dependency injection in PHP. And recently, uh, DI containers have also been made interoperable by uh, PHP framework interoperability group. This is how the common interface for a container looks like. You see, there are two simple methods for detecting and retrieving a service using a string identifier. Now, this common interface illustrates one important attribute, one important aspect of DI containers that I want to talk about. They are like fire. They are a good servant, but they can be a bad master. They are tremendously useful if you know how to use them. But if you use them incorrectly, they burn you. For instance, now that you've seen the interface, you might be tempted to implement a container like this. See, so this implementation is, again, very simple. It knows how to, create, uh, how to create any service in the application. It resolves the dependencies of the services recursively. It can even accept parameters. So that's another problem settled. We manage the parameters in a single place. It's nice. But then you might be tempted, looking at the get method of the container interface, to use it like this in the controller. And congratulations, 
you've got a pet master and you've burned your peppers. Why is that? Two reasons. First, the one my talk is actually named after, you are relying on an arbitrary service identifier. Now this makes this class, this code, depend on the definition of the container. You need the knowledge of how the services are named in the container. Uh, you need to know that a service named authenticator is in fact an instance of the authenticator class. And the IDE doesn't know it, the static, static analysis doesn't know it. So you got problems. We can luckily remedy this very easily. We can result in a much more natural identifier for the class, for the service, and that's its type. After all, the type that it is an instance of authenticator is all you care for. It's all you care about as a developer. You don't need to know what random string the service is associated to in the container. I mean, this code is arguably easier to both write and read. With a little hint, it might be easier to analyze statically, both for tools like PHP Stan and for the IDE. But we've only solved one problem. We haven't tamed the flames yet, we're still burning, because the other larger, much larger issue is this. You are demeaning the container into the role of a service locator, which is nowadays considered an anti-pattern by many developers. Well, all DI containers are in nature service locators, and that's really the only common interface among them, as demonstrated by the PSI interface. But that doesn't mean that you should use them as service locators. The problem is that the signing controller is not transparent about its dependencies. You need to scan the whole class, the whole code, to find out what services it needs. You are also giving it the whole container. You are giving it the liberty to fetch any service from it. You don't have control over it. And last point, this code is very difficult to cover by tests. Because in order to mock just a single service, the single dependency of the controller, which is the authenticator, you need to build the whole container. It's so much more boilerplate code for testing. So how to use a DI container as a good servant and cook something delicious? Well, now that I think of it, I shouldn't have put food on the slides because I'm getting hungry. Hope you're not getting hungry. Um, well, I've already gone a bit ahead of myself in this talk. If you've been paying attention, when I was trying to construct the authenticator in the controller at the spot, I was giving it the user repository in its constructor. And that's the way to go. That's the way you should do it. And that's also the main point of dependency injection. The class, the signing controller in this case, should not have to care about how it gets its dependencies. It should only declare them in the constructor and let them be someone else's problem. And someone else, again, is the DI container. And this is so much better. I mean, the class is transparent about its dependencies. They are no longer hidden, scattered uh, throughout the class, the code. They are also enforced. You are not able to create an instance of the controller without providing the necessary authenticator. And testing this class has suddenly become so much easier too, because you only have to mock this one service, this one class, the authenticator. Well, the only step that's left is to teach the container how to create the controller, so that the controller can again be created by the container somewhere else. And again, fetching the dependencies recursively, the authenticator in this case. You might notice that the container internally uses the service locator approach, but it's okay as long as it is, well, contained here, pun intended. Because the container is just firing, it's just assembly instructions. It's not executive code, it's not important in a way. While yes, it is crucial for the application, that's only from the developer's perspective. It doesn't really matter to the user, it doesn't bring any value to the user if you're using dependency injection container or not. 
Uh, in fact, the only place outside of the container where calling the get method is acceptable is in the index.php file in the application's entry point where you need to create the uh, container itself and get the root of the dependency graph, usually some sort of application instance provided by your framework of choice. Okay, back to the container. You can probably imagine handwriting the container can get quite tedious as your application grows. I mean, this is already complex and we've only got four services there. We need to list uh, all the dependencies by hand and keep track of what's needed where. Uh, I mean, in other words, for a book of instructions, it is still unnecessarily complicated. Luckily, there are ways to simplify the container definition and turn it more into something like this. I mean, IKEA is, uh, I would say, infamous for its illustrated assembly manuals. And you might not agree that they are simple. I feel you. I, I found myself too banging my head against the wall after two hours spent trying to assemble a simple IKEA table. But yeah, imagine you'd have those instructions in a long stretch of text in small print instead. And it would be even more horrible. Oh, I'm going to talk about my favorite DI container implementation, which is that of Netter Framework. Netter uses Neon, a file format for configuration files similar to YAML, but better, like YAML on steroids. And this is how you would define the same container we've seen before, using Neon configuration. And you might notice two things, they go hand in hand. First, you don't need to explicitly list any dependencies anywhere. The only thing that's explicit here is the database parameter. And second, the list of services is truly a list. It's not a hash map, not a dictionary, uh, not an associated array, whatever you want to call it. There are no artificial service identifiers, service names. How is that possible, you ask? Well, it's thanks to auto-wiring. Netter Framework's DI container doesn't rely on strings. It works right on top of PHP's type system, so that when you require an instance of Authenticator, it bypasses the name entirely and finds the service only by its type. You might argue that auto-wiring is not unique to Netter Framework, and you'd be right. For example, Symfony uses the same mechanism but unlike Netter Framework, Symfony's solution is still built upon service names. And there are pretty common scenarios where Symfony falls short. For example, uh, a pretty simple refactoring. You know, as the needs of the application grow, we are forced to support various ways of authentication. So we turn Authenticator into an interface and register the implementation that uses local database connection instead. Now Symfony is suddenly clueless because the service is named local authenticator, whereas the controller only relies on the authenticator interface. You need to give Symfony an explicit hint through a service name Elias. Okay, minor hiccup. On the other hand, Netter doesn't need service names at all and doesn't require you to duplicate in configuration the same information that is already expressed in code. If you register the local authenticator service, Netter knows that the class implements authenticator interface and that it is the only service that does so. So it happily auto it where the interface is requested in the controller. Also, it does so transparently and deterministically. When it cannot unambiguously resolve the dependencies, it throws a helpful exception and forces you to alter your configuration, but only in this scenario. So as a result, you get a dependency injection container that is really easy to configure and maintain, and at the same time doesn't let you shoot yourself in the food 
by being transparent and enforcing good architectural patterns. So that's why I love MetaFrameworks DI container, and that's why I think if uh, you should go check it out, I mean, it's far more powerful than what you've seen in this talk already. And I hope this talk has got you hooked. And I'll be sure to go and check it out on GitHub in the documentation that, link, that is linked from the repositories. This is uh, the QR code with uh, the slides. So you can go through the slides if you need to review the code samples again. And that's all from me. I've been easy. I've been telling you about NetTest dependency injection container. If you have any questions, I'll gladly answer them. And thank you. Thank you for joining, our, joining us, Yuzi. Uh, we have first question on Slido. So I will just switch to Slido here. Uh, so I just also see that. Is it possible to teach Net uh, DI to pass dependency directly to methods like in some framework? <laughs> what is some framework? Uh, I think it's Sergei's uh, inside joke. He refers to Symfony because ah. the SF ah, uh, logo. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so uh, Sergei, yes, it is. Uh, it is absolutely possible. You need to uh, explicitly write that in the configuration, but yes, you can. Cool. Uh, I've written a note. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit on, sure. like, uh, basically compare like a singleton uh, pattern and like one type register in DI, like because it's in DI you just register types, yeah. and then if there is just one type matching, it's out of wires, yeah. right? So what's the difference between this and the singleton? Okay, I'll need to, sorry. Just a second. Yeah, I'll navigate to, yeah. To the very beginning, I guess. Yeah, here, I'll navigate here. Because singleton would be pretty similar to this. Even if the container was static and you would uh, fetch the authenticator from it statically, it would be the same case you would be hiding the dependencies of the, of the controller here and you would have a hard time testing it mm -hmm. and uh, you would be again pretty much using service locator oh. so I, I don't think that's it's an implementation detail if it's singleton if it's uh, this approach if it's static or not yeah, so so like the difference is that here we we should we we would get like authenticator double uh, double colon double colon uh, get or something yeah. that that's singleton right but here we effectively get like kind of singleton because we when we call this container get authenticator we always get the same instance but the thing is that we can change it like uh, in central way we can register some another instance type and the, the dependency injector. Uh, dependency injection container will create another instance of another type, right? Yeah, yeah. and this, this is not magic. Singleton would mm -hmm. be magic. You would not know uh, where it comes from mm -hmm. in the end. Whereas uh, if you... Yeah, from, the, from, from outside. Yeah. I will not see. Yeah, yeah. But uh, th in this case, the authenticator comes from outside as well, but uh, you are explicit about it. Yeah, yeah. You explicitly declare that it's your dependency and it's not hidden in the code of the class. It's uh, clearly there in the constructor. That's really nice. That's really nice. Okay, I have another question on Slido. Uh, anonymous question. I remember you <laughs> used NetDI Web Sling framework oh, it's for you, API. You with capital Y. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, NetDI is uh, obviously part of the whole framework, but it can be used uh, as a standalone package. In fact, uh, I no longer use Slim framework I, uh, for API. Uh, I'm using PSR 15 middlewares, 
the API, but still use NetTest DI container in the application. So yeah, it it uh, you can use NetTest DI without uh, taking the rest of the framework with it. Yeah, that's awesome. 